welcome back to my channel. I am your teacher, the busy teacher, and today's class will be about computers. Now, we're gonna be going through some key terms for today's class, so sit tight, stay tuned, listen up so you can learn. The first term we'll be looking at is information technology. Now it's really simple, guys because information technology speaks to how we use computers to accept data, to store information and data, to process it, to transmit it. It speaks to all of these things. And when these things all work together, you get information technology coming out. So now that we understand information technology, let's move on to our next term, which is the computer. Now, the computer is really, really cool, guys, because it really helps to understand even the term we just did, information technology. The computer is an electronic device that accepts data, processes data, and then stores it and or sends it out as information. It makes all of these things work together in a seamless way in just seconds that you wouldn't even believe that it's happening. Let's now look at input. Input is the basic process of entering data into the computer. So when you use your phone to record audio or you type data, letters, numbers, characters into your computer, or you take a picture with your camera, all those things are called input because they are using the different computing devices to enter data into the computer system. Now let's talk about processing. Now I love describing this word because it's so fun to think of it as raw meat that needs to be cooked. In just the same way that you're gonna season your meat and you're going to cook it over open fire and make sure that it is nice and juicy, it's the same way that processing works for the computer, for information technology. Because when data is entered into the computer system, it must be processed, meaning it must be changed or manipulated or transformed into something else in order for it to make sense to the user. Now, it can come in different forms, the data. It can come in text, it can come in audio files, it can come in pictures, like I said before. However, it must all be processed by the computer system so that you, the user, can interact with it in a real way. All right, let's go back to the concept of cooking chicken for a second. When you cook that raw meat and it's done, it's no longer raw meat, is it? It's presented nicely on your plate as jerked chicken or baked chicken or roasted chicken. I mean, you can just imagine. It's the same way output presents in this situation. After data has been processed by the computer CPU, it is then either stored or outputted. And outputted, outputted information is simply information that's sent out of the computer after it has been processed. Now we've been going very well, and we've looked at so many things that the computer has done, is doing, and is able to do, that all works together to make it what it is, a computer. But we've missed out on one very important thing, and that is storage. Now storage is as simple as the name states. It stores. It stores your data and your information that you don't really want to use right now in the moment for a later date. Then penultimately, we have data. Yes, those raw facts, figures, values. One, two, three, A, B, C. Text, words, pictures that are entered into the computer and that requires some amount of processing so we as a user can be able to interact with it. And then finally, we have information, which as we have said so many times throughout this video, is what we get when data has been processed by the computer's CPU. And here we are now, guys. We are at the term that ties it all together, the data processing sequence. Now, the data processing sequence you see here will be the simplest form you can see it in for this level. However, I'm going to bring to you an analogy that's gonna make you understand it. So, so far, you already know what data is, 
you know what input is, you know what processing is, you know what information is, and you know what output is. Now, to understand that data plus processing is equal to information, I'm going to bring to you the analogy of kneading flour for dumpling. So many of us, our parents, and even ourselves, have gotten flour and salt and sugar, if you like it like that, and cornmeal and baking powder to determine the kind of flour that you're going to be kneading. Now you put all those raw ingredients in a bowl and you mix it and knead it together with water as the binding agent. Then when you're done kneading, going through that process of kneading, you then put it in the oven or in the frying pan or in the boiling water to, to go through another process of cooking. And then when it's done, what you have presented in front of you is dumpling. Fried dumpling, boiled dumpling, baked dumpling in the form of biscuits, whichever way you want it, that is what you now have presented in front of you. And the data processing sequence is pretty much the same. It takes those raw facts and figures, that's called data, and it processes it in the computer's CPU, changes it so that it becomes the next thing on the line, which is information, which as we now know, is the end result of data that has been processed. Now, as you get further into your IT lessons, you'll realize that this whole process can be extended a little further to include other things. But for right now, this is where it's at and this is the data processing sequence. Thank you guys for listening today and I hope that you learned and that you'll come back and listen again and again and again until you get it right and pass whatever test you have.